Okay, we have a homemade integral here today. What we have on the board is an integral from zero to infinity, dx over x to the 101 plus x to the 99th plus x squared plus one. Okay, the thing that jumps off first is it looks like we can do some factoring here. And what I wanna do to rewrite this, what I'll do is factor an x to the 99 out of this. So if I factor out an x to the 99, we'll have inside here x squared plus one. And that's nice because here we have another x squared plus one. Just do parentheses to make it clear. Then doing a rewrite again, what I'm gonna do is factor an x squared plus one out. And then this is gonna be x to the 99 plus one all over dx. And then you may notice that this kind of indicates that we could do a trig sub, even though this is kind of unfamiliar. You know, this is not like our typical looking trig sub but I'm gonna go with this and do the trick sub anyway. So let's see, so if I make, in this case, what we'll do for a trick sub is we'll say x equals tan of t. Okay, then dx is gonna be secant squared t dt. And while I'm at it, x squared plus one is gonna be tan squared t plus one. But tan squared t plus one can be written as secant squared t. And maybe just make this a little easier, we can write t as tan inverse x. So then first evaluating at infinity, arctan at infinity is gonna be pi over two, and arctan at zero is just zero. Then for our dx value, we have secant squared t dt. x squared plus one, that's, that's also gonna be secant squared. Very nice. And then this is actually going to be, so x is tan of t, so this is going to be tan 99 of t plus 1. And from here, our secant squared terms are just going to cancel. And then at this point, you may notice this is like a perfect situation for King's principle. And what I like to do to kind of transform this a little bit, though, is I want to turn this into sines and cosines. You don't have to, but I, I find it works a little easier that way. So I'm going to multiply by cosine 99 t over cosine 99t, so we're just multiplying by one. And when we do that, we're gonna have uh, cosine 99t in the numerator. Then cosine 99t times tan 99t is gonna be sine 99t, and then times one, we're gonna have a plus cosine 99t. Then at this point, what we can do is a u substitution. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call my u equal to pi over two minus t. Now, how did I get that? There's a couple ways that you can kind of remember this. One way is you can look at it as adding the bounds together. Pi over two plus zero is pi over two minus our variable t. But the other way, notice this is gonna set up our complementary angle formula when we plug in pi over two and for the trig functions here, sine or cosine. Then while we're at it, let's just solve for t. t is gonna be pi over two minus u. And so our dt value is gonna be minus du. Then making this substitution, we plug a pi over two in, we have zero, we plug a zero in, we have pi over two. Then plugging in our t value, we're gonna have cosine 99 pi over two minus u, sine 99 pi over two minus u. This cosine here is gonna be exactly the same as our numerator. Now from here, we have this minus sign. I'm just gonna take this up front and use it to swap my bounds, okay? So then by doing that, you notice we have the same bounds here and here. Now from here, what I can do is use my complementary angle formulas for sine and cosine. And that's going to, this is going to allow us to transform everything here. What it's going to do is it's going to flip cosine pi over 2 minus u to sine. And it's going to flip sine to cosine. So let's see how that looks. Okay, now after doing that, notice my denominator is exactly the same as what we have here. Different variable, but that doesn't matter and we flipped our cosine to sine. And what I actually wanna do now is let's do a variable change. The reason I can do that is because it's a definite integral, so the variable name doesn't matter. But what I wanna do is get everything back to t. I could get back into u, we could use any variable we want, but let's get this back to t. The reason I'm doing that and what we're trying to set up is I wanna add this integral, which we'll call i, which is the same thing as our original integral, right? But then this integral is also i, so let's take these two and add them together and see what we have. Okay, now adding these two together, we have two copies of the integral now. 
and it works out really nice because notice we have the same denominator. We have the same variable and the same denominator. So putting these together, we can combine it into one integral and one fraction. But the real nice thing is we have the exact same numerator as denominator. So this is gonna cancel out and the whole thing is just one. So we get some really good simplification. So actually all we need to do is integrate one in order to finish this off now. All right, so integrating this, we're just gonna have t evaluated from pi over two to zero. Plugging that in, we're gonna have pi over two minus zero equals pi over two. And the only thing we need to do is just gonna remember this is two copies. So we'll divide by two in order to solve for our original integral. And so for our final solution, we have pi over four. That's it, so thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.